first programme last night, we saw Liverpool beat Arsenal in the very first match of the day back in 1964. And it wasn't very long before the programme was living up to its name. In the closing months of 1965, the defending league champions, Manchester United, twice met Tottenham Hotspur. It was the glamour club of the North, with Best, Law and Charlton in their ranks, against the aristocrats of the South, who included names like Greaves, Gilzine and Mackay. Now, the first match, played in October here at White Hart Lane, which we're going to show first, drew a crowd of over 58,000. And as you'll see, it was quite spectacular. And yet, the return at Old Trafford, played barely two months later, managed to live up to it. Which is why people have said, ever since, that whenever Manchester United plays Spurs, you know you're in for a football treat. There we see Jennings, Pat Jennings, coming in in goal, although he's a reserve here, he's still Northern Ireland's number one goalkeeper. And at number six, Dave Mackay, the Tottenham captain, will be all out to show the Scottish selectors that they were wrong to drop him and put Pat Creran, the Manchester United wing halfback, into the Scottish side. A pretty formidable lineup. But when we have a look at Manchester United's team, we see that there are ten internationals in that lineup. There, Pat Creran at right half, the man who knocked Dave Mackay out of the Scottish side. Dennis Law, of course, one of the most controversial footballers um, in the land. And Bobby Charlton at centre forward, who's just reached his 28th birthday. And in front of the packed crowd is Tottenham Hotspur in the white shirt who start the first division game and defending this incredible home record of theirs. They haven't been beaten in a league match at White Hart Lane for 18 months. They've done 31 games without defeat at home. This season, they've only dropped one point from their six home games. Whereas Manchester United have only gained three from their five away games. All out to change just now is Dennis Law, number 10. One of the many men to watch in this match. Another interesting change. Number eight in the Manchester United side. There he is is George Best, usually an outside left. Southern to Aston. Monica to Manchester United. Aston with the corner for Manchester United. Jennings did to catch that one. It was coming away from him all the time. After those early minutes when Manchester United were forced to concentrate on defense, but coming into it now, playing a beloved attacking football. Many Canelli again with quickness off the mark. And another corner for Manchester United. Canelli with the corner for Manchester United. Getting him to first form for Tottenham. Up 
Rosine giving a first hand account of how the ball didn't go in the first time but did the second. From Manchester United. Goal down. Really get up steam now, I should imagine. Now Mackay. Four at the breeze from the Tottenham fans in a very happy mood. There's Murray breaking forward. There's Murray on side. And a corner kick. Pressure on Manchester United now. Green. Green again. And another corner. No. Fouls the man who stopped it. 11 Manchester United players back in defence. Deep south and has had to come. Charlton. Can Brennan make it? Yes. Brennan the fullback. Now a chance for Spurs to break it. Mullery. Got Greaves on his left. Here's Greaves, number 10. Gilzine in the middle. And out there for Manchester United. Gilzine. Johnson. No, Robertson rather. a full professional in June of last year. There he is, Neil Johnson, made his debut on the 6th of October. That's a memorable enough start. Only his third league game, and he gets the goal against the champions, Manchester United. Free kick for a foul by Tony Dunn on Robert. And there goes the whistle straight after the free kick for half time as Tottenham Hotspur leading by two goals to nil. John Fitzpatrick playing instead of Dennis Law. Law, who is injured in the first half, didn't see any one act of injury, but he limped very badly, very painfully, and now he's off. So Manchester United starts the second half, two down, and Dennis Law out of the game. Now here's Fitzpatrick.
is Jimmy Green. For my money, the goal of the season so far. And that's what the fans think of it. By his Baron for Manchester United. Thompson up to Aston. So well in defense. Now, best number eight. A fine effort by the And best could well be heard. He collided with Lonnie Brown. Is he getting up? Yes. Oh, Kelsey to Green for his offside. Free kick to Manchester United. Touch out and drag that ball away from Mackay, but still to no avail. Mackay up to Gilzean, here's Mackay again. Clayton, go! And to the chance of easy, easy. Supporters chanting easy, easy at Manchester United. An hour's play gone, Spurs 4 0 in the league. Up the best. Murray coming back to cover. Now, please, we did slow up the mark. Quite fast enough for the stars. Southern playing with all the time in defence now for Manchester United. Clayton back to Gilzean and here's Green. And here's Charlton. Working away in defence with style. Best. Charlton deciding to move up. And he knows in his heart of hearts a forlorn time facing the team now. That will do for one of beauty. Bobby Charlton. Scorer of Manchester United's goal. Significantly no real jubilation in the Manchester ranks. But jubilation among their supporters. three goals to get a point. Not just at the moment, says Laurie Brown. Three. Riding at Tampa by Styles beautifully. minutes left for play, corner to Spurs, who lead by four goals to one. Robertson taking the corner kick. Robertson again. Back to Mackay, Manchester United's defenders come out. Well, 
Roman. Gilzine. So now Gilzine. Has to get his shot in. Now Beth. Fitzpatrick moving quick down the left. There's Charlotte going down the middle. To Aston. Charlton. the great lion of Tottenham. No. Gilveen. Gilveen is the next skirt of screening the ball from the back. A lovely football, Robertson. Five. Well, it was some match, Alan, and uh, the first thing that occurs to me and to many other people watching it, no doubt, is that here we are 20 years later and Pat Jennings stood in the first division. Yes, quite true. I think Pat actually was 12 years old when that game was split. <laughs> He's done well, hasn't he? Very well. Fantastic. Um, Spurs versus Manchester United, it's always been, uh, nearly always anyway, a classic match down the years. I wonder why? Well, we always look forward to playing each other, two great clubs, and a lot... I think has got to do with it was the two managers, Matt Busby and Bill Nickerson, they were always attackingly minded. They always bought players with attack in mind. I never once remember Bill Nick ever not asking the club to go out and play defensive football. And I think they hold a lot of the credit for it. Well, the attribute that will be remembered, I think, by most Spurs fans as far as you were concerned, was your head work. In fact, you were revered for it at White Hart Lane. But the goal that we've just seen you score in that match, by your standards, was more of a scrambled affair. Yeah, sure, it was. It's, uh, they were the type I liked, actually, from two inches. Yeah, I was deadly from that range. Well, looking back uh, to the centre circle there, just after the goal had been scored, there was a clear shot of you having a bit of a joke with Dave Mackay and Jimmy Greaves before they kicked off again. And it struck me that there must have been quite a camaraderie at that time between the Spurs players. Yes, I think the good thing about that team, like, uh, we were a team on the park and we were a team off the park. We used to enjoy ourselves off the park as well. After the games, we used to go for a drink together. And uh, it was a good setup, and it was a good club, good team spirit. Now, as the man who played alongside Jimmy Greaves, uh, you were probably in a better position than anybody else to uh, show your appreciation of that fantastic goal. Oh, well, that was typical Greaves. The fellow was a great player. Like he, had, he was gifted by God. He could turn so quickly. And the great thing about him, in the box, he always had time. He had the split second more than any other player. And that is the difference between a, an ordinary player and a great player. And Jimmy was gifted with that. What was it like to play alongside him? Well, it was full of fun. He, he, he's a great character, Greaves. He, like, there was never a dull moment. Team meetings on the park, even in the tenses of moments, he always found the funny side of it. And I think like, that's what football's all about. No matter how tense it was, Greaves, he always enjoyed it. And that, that was a great factor. Well, we all know what Jimmy's doing now, but quite a few Tottenham supporters will want me to ask you what Alan Gilzean is Alan doing Gilzean. these days. Yes, well, I'm a manager of a transport company in Chingford, East London, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yes. Do you miss the game? Oh, naturally, but I was very fortunate. I had 20 years of it, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Dundee and, and again with Tottenham. Well, if I could just uh, finally bring it back to the, the match we've just seen, and indeed the match we're going to see, Bobby Charlton's shooting prowess was uh, known worldwide at that time. He put sure. a beauty away in the game we've just seen, mm -hmm. and uh, another one at Old Trafford two months yes, later, when sure. in fact the game, without giving away too many secrets, turned out to be very different to the one at White Hart Lane. Yes, well, I, I prefer to remember the one at Tottenham, actually, but Bobby's goal, the goal here was a fantastic goal, and Bobby was renowned for that. Like, the guys like Greavesy and Charlton on the park, there was never bad games, because they could pull something up, make a, an ordinary game into a fantastic game by just sheer wizardry. Unfortunately, the game at Old Trafford was going to be hard. We expected it to be hard, because once you douse Man United 5-1, expect them to come back but we never realized it would come back so much let's enjoy it together now yeah. Alan. thank you okay thank you this is the all conquering manchester united team of the moment and if you look at that forward line you can see what a, a goal scoring outfit it is and good to see greg and cantwell back in the team now Tottenham hotspur being cruelly hit by injuries and by illness especially this season and since they beat manchester united 5-1 You'll notice that there's now no Boris Norman 
and there is no Jimmy Greaves. But it's good to see Cliff Jones back in the side, only third league game of the season. This game going to be a test of stamina as well as skill as Manchester United kick off. A remarkably good crowd for such a bad day. And now his ball making the break for Stockton. Throw in. Crowd not as big as we'd hoped, but this is the worst Saturday of the season, of course. So took that one well. Robertson moving down his right wing and his Gilzine. That was a good effort by Saul. Almost catching Harry Gregg unawares. penalised and Law very annoyed at that thinking that Manchester United were punished really because they were in possession <laughs> he cut off by Beal is Mullery Mullery getting through a lot of work so too is Mackay A bit of trouble now, Treron and Saul. And a free kick given to Manchester United. Mind you, it's quite understandable with players slithering and sliding around. Quite understandable that they push and shove each other and then mentally lose their tempo. Charlton. Oh, what a goal! Oh, oh! What a goal! The scorer, Bobby Charlton. Well, that's the sort of goal it's worth getting wet to see. That makes up for everything, a goal like that. Charlton brought down by Mackay. Twenty minutes gone, Manchester United now lead by one goal to nil. Now this is Law. Now we've broke the ice and got a goal. This game will really boil, I should think. Oh, Charlton has peach of a pass out to Canelli. This is Robertson. Back to Beale. Goal really does something to Manchester United. Here they come again. It's heard. In goes Law. A goal, yes. All the men makes it 2 0. Goals you want certainly come to Manchester with television cameras. Oh, Tottenham, who'd been in this game fairly well, are now struggling badly. Two goals in a couple of minutes. But there's no satisfying Manchester United support as they're now chanting, not we want three, but we want six. Now, style and law. And the sparkle really coming out in the Manchester Diamonds now. A 
Mackay with a throw. The Spurs. Gilzine, that's the beauty. A Jones. Well, it could have worked. that one. Oh, he's beaten by Hurd. And an old goal. An old goal by Beale. An old goal by Beale. And it looks... It looks as if Manchester United are going to full revenge for that thrashing they had at White Hart Lake. And a great afternoon for Manchester United then. It's the bad weather. United, the crowd rising to them now as they go off in the lead by three goals to nil. The rain still coming down has cut them hot to start the second half. The ground getting heavier and heavier and heavier with each second and Tottenham's task now a mountainous one. Three down there. to Brown. Finding Clayton. Sutton has got to pull Stanley out of the back mighty quickly. Saul trying to do it to Robertson. And a goal! Well, you can't get it quicker than that, can you? The first minute of the second half and Dick Jones has fought for something. Dangerous player in the air, Cliff Jones. Well, that puts the different complexion on the game a bit, doesn't it? Tottenham could strike another blow quickly, then United could well be in trouble. And Jones offside. Didn't think he was, did he?
Ryder Finney, number 10, David Hurd. Makes it 0-1 now. Takes the nose to Mackay. He's playing with rare spirit for a team 4-1 down. Keep Heard out of it, he's still with it. Get out of the way, yes. Well, that'll give the crowd something to talk about. Canelli. And the corner to Manchester United. United leading. Now oh, oh, it's a lovely one. Back now to Gilsey. And goal. Oh, a fine save by Gilsey. Brilliant there, Gilsey. Now Law once again coming back to Forage in defence. What a game of superb thrills this is. And Law and Jones having a bit of a do together. What do we call it? High spirit for the fun and games. We're going to be pointing at someone else. The referee declared the contest a draw, so it's a drop ball. Now, Robertson. Now he's got to have a crack quicker than that. Best. Once you get a chance under these conditions, you, even if it's only a half chance, you've got to have a go. Guilty. that one before best. And now, long last, the pace beginning to slacken a bit. As well it might. Now Clayton to Gilzine. Absolutely dead time. But what entertainment they've all given. Best to Canelli. To Law. We always knew there was going to be a lot of goals. We always knew that if you didn't work hard, you were going to be beaten. Uh, Liverpool was one. If you ever went to Liverpool, you knew. Even though they might have a bad team on paper, it was always difficult. Tottenham was, was always a match they always used to look forward to. I think it was because it was a good stadium. And whenever we played here at Old Trafford, we always used to have good matches with lots of goals. Um, and Tottenham were, were always known as a good football team, as United were. And seeing these... These two matches really brought it back to me how much in those days we used to go forward. You know, I mean, you see sometimes today that from the kickoff the ball goes back to the goalkeeper and that's the first action in the match. 
you know, whereas in those days, if you got the ball, the first thing that was on anybody's mind, whether you were a full-back, a midfield player, a forward, was, can I get forward if it was at all possible? But that was one of the nicest things about watching these two films, was to see, actually, people going forward all the time. And the crowd being, uh, from the beginning to the end, being completely thrilled by it. Well, one of the things that thrilled them, or two of them, I should say, were the Thunderbolts from R. Charlton. I mean, they must have been among the sweetest shots that you hit, surely? Yeah, I know. I hadn't really had a kick up to that point. It was quite early in the match and the crowd were getting on my back a little bit. I think, if I remember rightly, you know. And near enough, the first touch I had of the match was that ball that came to me. It was a headed out, ball headed out of the area from a free kick that we had. And by right, I was quite a long way out and I, I should really have got it under control, but I thought, what the hell, you know, I'm in the position, let's have a go, you know. And it just hit the spot. Two great examples of what Dennis Lowe's greatest, greatest assets were. He was like Quicksilver, like lightning. If, if a ball fell there and you, ha you, had question, you had a question in your mind about who was going to get it, the goalkeeper or fullback, and it was always Dennis Lowe. He, he just had this great gift of, of seeing little bits happening. And if a goalkeeper was going to drop it, he'd only have to drop it a yard and it was in. And if a defender just was a little bit lazy, He'd steal half a yard and it was in. He was clinical around the box at that particular time, Dennis. Um, and, and watching it, you know, you see me, miserable child, with his head down after he scores a goal. And then you see Dennis, who knocks one in, you know, going to the crowd and acclaiming it all, you know. Two different animals. But nevertheless, uh, it, was, it was a great period for us, that. It was probably uh, one of Manchester United's greatest periods with little George, who, who in these particular matches didn't show any of the unbelievable skill that he actually had. I think George hadn't been in the team so long at that particular time mm. and hadn't really been acclaimed as the great player that he was. No. The, the history of Manchester United is a bit of a millstone on the present players mm. in as much as they're always being compared with, with people that they can't really compare themselves with. Uh, it's a different game from when we first uh, started playing. I have mentioned before that we used to try and get forward as quickly as we can. It's much more a methodical game now, and it's created a different type of player. Uh, I think the public are aware of that. Uh, but the one thing that is consistent is that Manchester United expects the best. The fans expect the best. They've been brought up on it. Um, they, they at Manchester United think that they should be winning something. They should, if they're not winning something, they should, they should certainly be in the race right up to the end. And, uh, and that is a. As a director, I, I see as one of my aims, you know, with, with the chairman and the rest of the board, is to produce the team by making finance available to, to match the, the public's demands and support. Well, that's a good message for the new season, for United fans, but mm -hmm. uh, before the new season starts, that's the end of our second programme tonight. We've got two more to go, so don't go away. Tomorrow night it's your brother Jack and that Leeds team of the early 70s. I break out in a cold sweat when you mention that Leeds team of the early 70s. Good luck, John. <laughs> You'll see it tomorrow night. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>